Hi XR developers, as I'm sure you know by now, Meta's MR Utility Kit provides a rich set of utilities and tools on top of the Scene API to perform common operations when building spatially aware apps. This makes it easier to program against the physical world and allows developers to focus on what makes their app unique. We can easily raycast against scene objects, find valid spawn locations inside our rooms, find the most suitable surface for placing objects, or even achieve some neat lighting effects against our furniture. Version 71 of MRUK is a big update that adds even more useful features, which we will quickly cover in this video. If you haven't watched my MRUK introduction video, I highly recommend you to do so, to learn the basics of working with MRUK. If you like this type of content, please take a second to leave a like and subscribe, consider supporting me on Patreon to get access to the source code of all my videos, and if you have any questions, feel free to join our growing XR developer community on Discord. And now, let's get started with this quick update about MRUK version 71. If you update your project to v71 and head over to the samples tab, you will see some new sample scenes. The destructible mesh, environment panel placement, which is currently in beta, and the keyboard tracking scene. I'm quickly going to show you how to set up these features yourself, so you get a better understanding of what components they are composed of. Let's start by looking at the destructible mesh. We start by importing the camera rig and pass through building block. Then we import the MRUK prefab, which will load our room for us. Lastly, Let's create an empty game object, which we name Destructible Mesh, and we assign two components, the Destructible Global Mesh Spawner and the Destructible Mesh Experience. The system is actually composed of yet another component, which is instantiated by the Destructible Global Mesh Spawner class called Destructible Mesh Component. These classes work together to handle the creation, segmentation, and interaction of destructible meshes. The spawner provides various customization options. Key features include reserved spaces, which are areas within the mesh that remain indestructible, for example, ceilings or floors. Segmentation density controls the number of segments using points per unit X, points per unit Y, and max points count. You should increase this number for larger rooms, but always be aware of the impact on your performance a higher number of segments could have. The global mesh material allows our app to assign a specified material to all destructible segments, and this can be helpful for debugging or achieving other visual effects. The destructible global mesh spawner listens to the MRUK room events and on room load, the start method registers callbacks for room creation and removal. When a room is created, add destructible global mesh is called, which retrieves the mesh vertices and indices from the room's global mesh and computes segmentation points based on the room's dimensions. It creates the destructible global mesh game object per room and adds a destructible mesh component class to it. The destructible mesh component is responsible for the segmentation, manipulation, and rendering of the destructible mesh. It handles dividing the mesh into smaller segments and managing their life cycle. Each segment is instantiated as a separate child game object, which allows for independent destruction and manipulation. The main method, segment mesh, takes in vertex positions, indices, and segmentation points. It defines reserved minimum and maximum vectors using the reserved top and reserved bottom which can be set in the inspector to set reserved areas like ceilings or floors. The Destructible Mesh Experience class acts as the user-facing interface for interacting with the Destructible Mesh system. It handles input and user actions, such as triggering segment destruction or creating or removing the Destructible Mesh based on user input. With this new system, I recreated my Destructible Mesh system, which imitates the same effect to reveal a portal or world outside of our room, just like in the first Encounters app. You can get the whole project on Patreon. Let's move on to our second feature for today, which is the instant content placement, which is in public beta at the moment. Until now, placing objects required developers to detect a surface or specific scene object in their room. With instant placement, however, we no longer require a room scan to simply place objects in our room. The system uses depth-based raycasting for precise surface detection and allows for user-driven and automatic placement of virtual objects. This drastically reduces user friction and speeds up development. Let's check out how this works. Again, we have a very simple setup here with a camera rig and pass-through building block. We then have an environment raycast manager as well as a sample component called environment panel placement. This shows us how to place a panel on our wall or any flat vertical surface. The environment raycast manager class manages raycasting against the physical environment using depth data from the depth API. It provides functionalities like raycasting, placement, and collision checks. This component is also in beta meaning its API might change in future versions. So be careful if you want to introduce this feature into your production app. The manager automatically initializes the environment dev manager 
if it's not already present in the scene. Ensuring that depth data is available for raycasting. The main methods include raycast, which performs a depth-based raycast and returns a hit result with information such as hit point, surface normal and normal confidence. The Environment Panel Placement class handles the interaction and placement of a virtual panel. It enables user to position and scale the panel using hand gestures and controller inputs while leveraging Environment Raycast Manager for automatic placement on detected surfaces. TriGet Environment Pose performs a raycast using Environment Raycast Manager to detect suitable surfaces and returns a pose for automatic placement. Of course, you cannot only place panels, but any object you want on any surface you want such as your board game on a flat surface in front of you or a TV screen on your wall. The last feature I would like to cover is the new improved keyboard tracking, which is also part of MRUK. The MRUK component itself now contains a keyboard tracking enabled checkbox. Also make sure that on your OVR manager under experimental, you check the checkbox that says experimental feature enabled. The keyboard manager class is responsible for detecting, visualizing and managing physical keyboards. It handles keyboard trackables, visualizes them using a prefab and toggles the pass-through layer mode based on user input. The class listens for keyboard trackable events through onTrackable added and onTrackable removed. When a keyboard is detected, it instantiates a prefab as a child of the trackable, anchoring it to the physical keyboard's position. It also initializes bounded 3D visualizer component, which uses the pass-through layer to render keyboard boundaries. This visualization aligns the virtual model with the real-world keyboard providing accurate boundary feedback. Don't forget to call the onTrackable edit and onTrackable removed methods from the Unity events on the MRUK component. I created another class called Keyboard Input Listener to listen for keyboard inputs and display the letters on a text field in front of us. You can also find this class on Patreon. Before you can use this feature, however, you will want to go over to your MetaQuest settings and then under Devices and Keyboard, go to the Bluetooth settings and pair your Bluetooth keyboard. After that, you can start the experience with the keyboard manager and your keyboard will be detected and tracked by the system. You can see that the user-defined pass-through cutout is following the keyboard. We can also type now and see the letters on our canvas in front of us. Amazing. And that's it for the MRUK V71 update. I hope you learned a lot and find some of the features helpful for your own app. I can't wait to see what you will build with these new features. As always, if you find this type of content helpful, Please take a second to leave a like and subscribe, consider supporting me on Patreon to get access to the full source code, and feel free to join our growing XR developer community on Discord. Thank you so much for watching and see you in the next one.